praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This moment, I want to let you know that it's a time you come to God. I want to share with you a very, very important message that will change your life. Can we have a word of prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, I just want to give you praise for today. I want to give you praise for your people. I ask my Father that your grace come upon their lives. This morning I decree that heaven be open over them. This morning I decree that the grace of God will overflow in their life. This morning I decree that the, the Father of glory will send them blessings and touch their lives, transform their lives, and make their lives to be turned around for his own glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning I have a very important message to pass across to you. And I know that this God has a reason for calling you into his presence. As you are watching me today, I want you to know that God is sending out an invitation. And it's not just an ordinary invitation. God is giving you what I title, the Great Invitation. Open your Bible with me to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 28 to 29. And it reads, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my body is light. Jesus is giving an invitation, and he is giving an invitation to all. He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor. That means you are under labor, you are qualified to come. You are under stress, you are qualified to come. You are indebted, you are qualified to come. You are sick, you are qualified to come. You are not saved, you are qualified to come. And he said, come to me. He is the man that has the answer. He has the solution. He has the solution to your problem. He has an answer to all your questions. Whatever may be your question, Jesus has an answer. You can come to him today. And that's why I titled it The Great Invitation. You can afford to miss other invitations. You can afford to turn down other invitations. You can afford not to attend to any invitation. But this is one invitation you cannot afford to turn down. Because it has eternal value. That's why you must receive this invitation. This invitation has eternal value. Why is Jesus giving you an invitation? Number one reason why he is offering you an invitation. Because he knows you are walking on a different pathway. The way you are going is not the way you ought to go. The way you are passing through right now is not the way you ought to pass through. Number two reason why Jesus Christ is giving you this invitation. Jesus knows that you are under stress. He knows you are under tension. He knows you are burnout. out. He knows that the enemy, the devil, is working against you. He knows that you are on the problem, under a heavy burden, and he wants to lift up that burden from you. That's the third reason why Jesus is giving you an invitation, because he has a better offer. You don't need to go to the devil. He's standing at a junction, at a junction, and that junction has to part way, and you are going another way, and that's why he's giving you an invitation. He said, come to me, don't go that way. Come to me because I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to God except through him. He is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. And these are things you need in life. You need the truth. You need the truth, come to Jesus. You need to know the way, come to Jesus. You need life, come to Jesus. And what are the offers of Jesus? I'm going to tell you the five offers that Jesus has for you today. Number one offer. Jesus has an offer of good health. Jesus has an offer of good health. Open your Bible to 1 Peter chapter 2. In verse 24, the Bible says, Who his own self be our sins in his own body, on the tree that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Ye were healed. That means Jesus has an offer of good health. Are you sick? You know, diabetes, science cannot change divine intervention. We thank God for medical science. But that cannot rule out 
divine intervention that cannot rule out miracles. Miracles are real today. It was as a result of the miracle of God that I turned my life over to Jesus. I used to be sick every month. Every month. 1983, I asked myself a question. Where will I be if I die in this sickness? I was a drunkard. That same time, I was sickly. That same time, every month, they rushed me to hospital and bring me back. And then I took it. I asked myself that question. If I die now, where will I spend my eternity? And I told myself the truth. I know it was the truth. I told myself I will go to hell. There and then, I decided that I will look out for Jesus. I went to a church. Right there, I gave my life to Jesus. I gave every aspect of my life to Jesus. When a person gives his life to Jesus, he gives everything about his life. Because in the blood, there is life. I gave my life, I gave my blood, I gave everything to Jesus. Since then, I never saw that sickness. I never went to hospital for that sickness. Jesus took my life and took away my sickness and gave me life. Today, I'm healthy. Today, since that time till to, to, to today, I have not seen that sickness anymore. And that's the same thing Jesus will do for you. He will give you good health. Jesus will give you life. And that's the offer that Jesus is offering to you today. You can have life. I want you to say amen. Life is for you. I see Jesus giving you life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two offer. Jesus is offering you abundant life. Number one I told you is offering you good health. Number three is offering you abundant life. Open your Bible with me to John's Gospel chapter 10. I read verse 10. The Bible says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come. That's Jesus. He said, I am come. That they might have life. And that they might have it more abundantly. Jesus wants you to live life in fullness. Jesus wants you to have the fullness of your life. Why will you be suffering on that sickness? Why will you be suffering on that death? Why will you be on that tension, on that stress, family divorce? Why will you be there? Why is your family not in peace? Why is your family in pieces? Today, Jesus is saying, come to me. Every problem you have, I'm ready. He said, cast your body upon me. I care for you. Jesus cares for you. And this today, as you are watching me, I want you to trust God for the healing. Healing of your home. I want you to trust God for the healing of your finances. I want you to trust God for the healing of your business. I want you to trust God for abundant life. I see you receive abundant life. I say that abundant life is coming to you today. Believe God for abundant life. And that's the offer of Jesus. Jesus is offering you abundant life. Number three offer. What are the offers of Jesus? Number three offer is offering you wealth. Jesus has never left anybody in any condition he sees him. If he meets a poor man, he makes him rich. If he meets a rich man, he makes him wealthy. I don't know the state where you find yourself. Are you wealthy? Jesus will give you super abundant wealth. Give you life from fullness. Jesus, everyone read from the, the beginning of Matthew to John. Anybody that Jesus meets, he does not leave him in the same status. He elevates his status to a new level. He meets a dead man, he brings him back to life. He meets somebody that is sick, he gives him health. And that's the condition. Jesus cannot leave you in the same condition. My brother, my sister, as you are hearing me right now, I want you to know that Jesus will never, never leave you in the same condition he finds you. Your condition must change today. I say your condition must change today. Say amen to that. I see Jesus bring healing to your body. I see Jesus bring healing to your system. I see Jesus bring healing to your family. And that's why the Bible says it gives us an offer of wealth. In the Bible, it tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 in verse 9. The Bible tells us, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. He became poor. Jesus became poor. That through his poverty, he might become rich. That is a promotion. Why will you remain in poverty? 
Poverty is not your portion. Say so to yourself. Touch yourself and say, Poverty is not your portion. I see Jesus take you from poverty and liberate you from poverty and take you to the height you ever dream of. What are you thinking about yourself, my brother? Why are you thinking about yourself, my sister? I see Jesus to remove you from that same condition you will find yourself and take you to a new level. You are going to a new level in the name of Jesus. I say you are going to a new level in the name of Jesus. You will not remain at the same level. And he says that ye, ye became poor so that you can become rich. Yet for your sakes he became poor. That ye through his poverty might be rich. Through his poverty that you might be rich. Satan me I shall not be poor. I shall be rich. I shall be a pillar to the gospel. I shall be a pillar to the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Have a vision of what God wants to do in your life. I see God bring you to pass in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want you to see number four. I told you number one. Offer of good health. Number two. Offer of abundant life. Number three. Offer of wealth. Number four. Offer of salvation. There is no any other name given among men. We have a way more be saved. Only the name of Jesus. It is only the name of Jesus. In 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 19 and 20. The Bible says, For as much as ye know that ye, we are not redeemed with corruptible things, our silver and gold, from your vain conversation, from your vain conversation received by the tradition from your fathers. And there he said, But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish, and without spot. It is the blood of Jesus that saves us from sin. It is the blood of Jesus that redeems us from iniquity. I don't know how long you have been toiling to be saved. It is the grace of God. The Bible says not by works, lest any man should, be, uh, lest any man should boast. It is by the grace of God. We are saved by the grace. So all you need to do is to come to Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, I've labored, I've struggled, but from today, I surrender to you. It's not something that is gradual. I hear some people say salvation is gradual. Salvation is not gradual. Jesus Christ said it is finished. Your sins are finished on the cross. Your pains are finished on the cross. You don't need to do gradual salvation. It's not of God. The moment you come to God and you surrender yourself, the grace of God will flow into your life. You say if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just. You will forgive us our sins and you will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Every unrighteousness in your heart will be washed away. Every iniquity in your spirit will be washed away. Whatsoever may be the things that is holding you down, Jesus is going to take them away. You will see your life being transformed. You see your life being changed. You see the presence of Jesus in your life. You see the glory of Jesus covering you. You see the God giving you grace to live life for him. You see God helping you to live life. Sal salvation of God comes as a result of grace. It's not as a result of your efforts. Law came by Moses. But grace and truth came by the Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of God will flow through your system. You don't struggle to serve God. You don't struggle to live your life for God. That's why I say you should come to him. Come to me. That's what Jesus is asking you. The blood of Jesus Christ is gushing down. Flowing from the altar of heaven. It's right there at the right hand of the Father. Interceding for you. It's right there at the right hand of the Father. Saying, Father, I died for her. Father, I died for him. Father, this person must be saved. And the moment you surrender, the grace of God is released into your life. You receive grace to walk in faith. You receive grace to serve the Lord. You receive grace to do the will of God. It's no longer struggle. It's no longer stress. You no longer be living as a hypocrite. You no longer be staying behind doors to drink or smoke or commit fornication or adultery. Oh, the God of heaven gives you grace. Have you fallen down before? Rise. You say if you need to fall seven times, you rise again. I see you rise again. I see the Spirit of God cause you to rise above the level you find yourself right now. All you need to do is to surrender. Once you surrender, the change comes your way. And then finally, number five, I told you five things. Number one, I told you, Jesus has an offer of good health. Number two, 
I told you that Jesus has an offer of abundant life. Number three, I told you that Jesus has an offer of wealth. I told you, number four, Jesus has an offer of salvation. And then, number five, Jesus has an offer of eternal life. Eternal life is for you. Are you sick? You will not die. Yesterday, I prayed for a woman who lost her kidneys, who was sick. And I told her that this is the end of that sickness. And I tell you something, she could hardly talk. But at the end of the prayer, she could talk. She could get up. She could do so many things. I tell you something. I told her that's the beginning of her testimony. The same thing is about to take place in your life right now. Are you down with sickness? I am telling you, rise up from today. All you need to do is to surrender to Christ. The moment you surrender to Jesus, that sickness will go. I can assure you. Do you know why I'm so sure? I'm so sure why I'm telling you. Do you know why? I've tested John 3.16 and it worked for me. Every other part of the scripture will work. If one can work, the rest will work. If one scripture is true, the rest will be true. I tell you something. If one scripture in the entire Bible is true, if this book is a book of contracts. If one scripture is true, the rest, I can assure you, are true. And I want you to know that the moment you come to Jesus, you believe him for salvation, you believe him, you have eternal life. And what is eternal life? A life that has no end. Remember, there are two types of eternal life. Eternal life in hell and eternal life in the kingdom of God. Jesus is giving you the eternal life in the kingdom of God. We are you feast with the king of kings. We are you feast with the master of angels. We are you feast with the man that walked upon the waters. We are you feast with the man that has ability to do all things. That is the kingdom that is offering to you. And he wants you to be translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his own dear son. And that's the offer of God to you through Jesus. Why don't you come to him today? Why don't you come to Jesus Christ today? How do I come? How can I come to Jesus? Number one, make a, make a U-turn. Make a U-turn. That's why he said, come to me, all ye that labor. Make a U-turn. Where are you going to? Make a U-turn and return back. Come back to Jesus. You need to make a U-turn. Confess your sins to Jesus. Come to Jesus and tell Jesus, I'm sorry. And the moment you confess to Jesus, that's your U-turn. Number two, you take Jesus. Receive the invitation. Take the invitation. Receive that invitation. That invitation that Jesus is offering you. Receive it. Receive the invitation. Grab the invitation with two hands. Make up your mind. Don't, don't, don't stop standing in one place. Make up your mind. Receive the invitation with your two hands. Take a decision that from today I will live my life for Christ. Take that decision. Number three, learn the ways of Jesus. Begin to learn the ways of Jesus. Learn the things that Jesus Christ. He lived a holy life. Begin to desire holy life. He lived a righteous life. Desire a righteous life. He was a giver. Begin to learn how to give. Whatsoever you have read about Jesus, begin to do them. He said, learn of me. Learn the way Jesus was lonely. He was meek. He was humble. Begin to learn the ways of Jesus. Learn how to pray. Learn how to read your Bible. We are in a society that is in a haste. We are in a society that is full occupied. We are in a society that everybody is busy. And that's why you need to learn of Jesus. And when you learn of him, you look like him. You carry the image of the Son of the Most High God. That's what God wants you. He wants you to learn of Jesus. He wants you to live your life for Jesus. He wants you to be like Jesus. He said, this is my only begotten Son, in whom I am well pleased. God is, was pleased with Jesus. God is pleased with Jesus. God will continue to be pleased with Jesus. And because God was pleased with Jesus, if Jesus is living inside you, God will be pleased with your life. God will be happy with your life. God will see your life. He will no longer look at your life. He will be seeing Jesus in you. He will be seeing Jesus standing in you. And you discover that all the things you are trying to do by your own self-efforts will be gone. Jesus will qualify you even though you look unqualified. Because of the presence of Jesus, God will qualify you. You know, so many people are not qualified. He said, but I'm not qualified. I'm a murderer. 
I'm not qualified. I'm a harlot. I'm not qualified. You know, I am wayward. I am not qualified for this grace. No, you are qualified. God is looking for the unqualified to qualify. You are qualified. The Bible says, He uses the foolish things to confound the wise. He uses the foolish things to confound the wise. You are qualified. Men may look for certificates. Men may look for qualified people. People who are masters. People who are PhD. People who are this. But God is not looking at all those things. Look at, he used David that was not qualified to be in the army to fight and conquer Philistines, to conquer Goliath. The same thing, God is looking at you. He wants to qualify you. He wants to move you from zero level to a hero level. And that's why you must learn of him. Learn of Jesus, the only perfect person that ever walked on the face of the earth. Learn of him. And the moment you start learning of him, things will change in your life. Then number four, discover the goodness of the Lord. Discover the goodness of the Lord, for the Lord is good and His mercy endure forever. Discover that God's goodness, the loving kindness of Jesus. Discover it. But how do you discover it? Learn how to study your Bible. How do you discover it? Always be in the service. Do not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Learn it. And when you learn those things, you see your life change. My life changed the moment I gave my life to Jesus. Everything about my life changed. I began to see the sweetness in Christ. I began to see the loving kindness of Jesus. If you give me those things I rejected in time past, I will never accept it for even a billion dollars. I will not. Why? Because the loving kindness of Jesus is greater than what you can offer me. And that's why you need him this morning. I am going to pray for you because I know that Jesus loves you. If you want to give your life to Jesus, this morning is another opportunity for you. I want to pray for you. Can you just lay your left hand on your chest and lift your right hand up? I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that, oh God, all these ones that are giving their life to Jesus, you touch their lives. All these ones that are giving their lives to Jesus, you turn around their lives. Oh Lord, I ask that your grace be released upon them right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father, because I know I know you love them because I know for their sake you died. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to pray for as many of you that are sick. Is there any sickness in your body? I want to pray for you. Can you lay your hands down on your chest, on your tumor, on your tummy, wherever there may be pain, on your neck, on your back? If there are desires in your heart, lay your hand on your chest. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to make a decree. And as I make that decree, I see God answer those prayers. For he is the one that sent me. And he said he will confirm my words. He is the one that confirms my word. Lay your hands on your chest while I pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come by the authority of the name of Jesus. I rebuke every foul spirit right now. What are you doing in that body? Take your stinking hands out of that body right now. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. I command sicknesses vanish from that body right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you, your foul spirit. Pack your Lord and leave that family right now in the name of Jesus. I'm speaking to the family that are facing the divorce case. I reverse it right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke and I command the hands of sickness out of your body system. Go in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I decree peace in your life. I decree the grace of God in your life. I decree that heaven and earth be open for your sake. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord touch your business. May the Lord touch your family. May the Lord touch your wayward children. I command a healing upon their system right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to use this opportunity to tell you this is a ministry that God put into my hand and by the special grace of God I've been able to put down some books as you can see this is Achievers Treasures Manual uh, this book is going to give you uh, 202 divine keys to a successful life 200 and to divine keys to a successful life. It has some verses, it has some inspirational word. You just take one 
and read it and read the scriptures and the Lord will bless you. And then we have, I have here the ministry of money to your life achievement. Money has a purpose for your life. And you've got to discover the purpose of money, the ministry of money. And then we have another book. I have another book. The title is The Game of Life. The life you are living right now is a game. Play it well and you'll be successful in life. It's a blueprint for success. And then we have another book, Evils of Poverty. Poverty is an evil, but there is a way of escape. I trust God that you will escape from that evil. Finally, there is a book I have for married women. A book I have for married women. And that is, So You Call Yourself a Wife. It helps you to teach you how you can relate with your husband. And as you do so, the Lord will bless you. All these books are for you, for a gift of $50. And as you do so, the Lord will bless you. God bless you.